Hey there everyone, it's Jess. Um, so I hope you're feeling creative and you want to um, design a project with me. I have been flipping through my book <clears throat> and looking for some projects that I could share um, through video technique. And actually one of them, let's see where it is. This necklace here, it's called Fly Away With Me. Um, inspired me to create a bracelet using this wing blank with the same technique but um, just into a bracelet form. So I wanted to share that with you and let me just find it here. I think it's on page 31. It's in the summer section. Yeah, there it is. So um, this uses deco etch technique with our Sizzix Big Kick and uh, deco etch die, some patina, hole punch pliers, and this is on our feathered wing blank. I love this blank. You can create such uh, really fun jewelry components with it. So um, that's what I want to share with you today. And hopefully you'll all have a vintage big kick and dies and you can design along. So um, I'm going to start off with, oh, actually... Here, I finished a bracelet to show you. So this is using two wings and creating etched pattern on the opposite um, side just by flipping a wing on the deck watch die to create, you know, so you can have like a mirrored, mirrored wings on this. And then wire wrapping some beads and it really makes a really pretty, pretty bracelet. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> I chose four deco etch patterns. We have our crackle. See that? That's what's on this bracelet here. It's really cool. I love that. And of course, the one that I use all the time, look at it. This is fine feathers. And that creates this pretty pattern that which is also in the necklace um, in the book. This here is one of our flower patterns. I should I'll put the names um of these in the comments of the video. It's really pretty. This might be embroidered, embroidery flower or something. That here, let's see. I did with that. <clears throat> and this pretty paisley tight pattern. So really you could use a whole variety of um, patterns to do this. Different ties. I'm gonna pull out the platform here so um, to get started, I have my solo platform shim and one clear cutting pad like usual. I think I'm going to go ahead and do I only have three? I think I have three of these out. Three blanks left, so <clears throat> we'll do three patterns here. Since I already did the crackle, let's do the other patterns. Okay, so since I've already done this wing... You're going to lay your blank face down. That's where the pattern's going to go. So because this, I want it to look like that, I'm going to be sure I lay this side, side down for the feather. Okay. <clears throat> and for the paisley... See if I can match up where I did this before. I don't know. Looks as if it was kind of right there. We'll try that. And now this guy. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to turn that this way and lay this side face down. All right, we'll see how I did. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and add your second cutting pad. And yes, Deco Etch does this to the cutting pads. It's going to leave, you know, um, impressions in it. And that's totally fine. That's supposed to happen. So you could do one at a time. I'm just going to show you that you could really produce a lot of pieces by running multiple through at once as well. Might be a little bit harder to turn through, but just hold on to your machine and go ahead and run it through one time. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And then you're going to see, this is the back side where it's kind of raised or embossed. But um, sometimes with Deco Etch, they stick a little bit. So all you have to do is flex that and it'll come up, easily come out. And then there's my etch side. Let's see if that's going to focus. So it leaves a fine line detail in the blank. It's really pretty. And once you add your patina, it's really going to pop. And Paisley and... And feather. So I'll get this stuff out of the way here so that way I could do some patina to these. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here if I could zoom in a little bit for you. So I'm just going to simply brush on. Brush on some patinas. You know what? Let's focus on replicating this feather. Grab those colors out. I think I have them all over here. <coughs> okay. So I believe I used Verdigris. Imagine that. One of my favorites. And Marine. Shake it up a little bit. Really gloomy day. Super gloomy and rainy and the lighting's not the best in here, so I apologize for that. I hope hopefully it's not too the video is not too dark. Okay, so I have my two colors. I'm gonna go ahead and blend those a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the marine. I think this is the color I use. It looks a little different, doesn't it? Doesn't it? We'll go for it. <laughs> I might have put a little bit of lapis or something in there to darken it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush a thin layer over this deco etch pattern. Rinse my brush with water. I'll go ahead and do verdigris on this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, um, jade. Do some jade on this pretty floral pattern. Yeah, so just um, when you're brushing it on, you kind of want to dab it on some spots just so it gets inside all those lines. That's where you want the patina to stay is in those detailed areas and this dries really fast so you just want to work with small amounts I'm gonna relief this off I've done many techniques where you've seen um, me do this deco etch and then use a paper towel to remove it really quickly while it's the patina still wet because that's just gonna give a super fine really fine detail line like your the patinas um, the way I'm doing it here I'm reliefing it it kind of spreads the color out even beyond the lines so you have more color. I kind of wanted that um, feel for this project so that's why I'm leaving it on. I'm going to relief it off. <clears throat> I'm just going to stick to these two for now. Okay so those that should be good for me to start sanding. And These non-stick craft sheets are awesome. See how this cleans up really easily. You know, it was a little bit dry and just wiping with a paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to use my reliefing block and I'm using a dark gray side. I'm just going to start sanding that off. So it's removing the patina from the raised areas. And everything's double sided. You can do the back. That's where you have like the raised pattern. If you prefer that, um, you know, you can always curve the piece this way. I'm going to do it, obviously, this way with the pati my patina side showing. So did I match it pretty good? Oh, a little bit lighter. That's okay. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and sign this one, too. Whoops. 
you know, you don't have fun until your hands get dirty, right? So crafting and jewelry making, once your hands are like super dirty, you know you had a good day. <laughs> They're dirty a lot. Okay. I love the Jaden bird green. These blues and greens are so pretty. Great for summer. <clears throat> okay, so now I have my mirrored wings. Get this guy up again a little bit. My mirrored wings in this pattern. And the fine feathers. Okay. Let's try to clean out a little space here for designing. I always run into that problem, especially when doing videos. I have all these tools and supplies and things out, and it's like trying to make the room. <clears throat> Okay, so what we're going to do next is add some holes to these so they can become um, connectors. So you just need the Vintage 1.5 millimeter hole punch plier. This has a nice um, tip with an, like an angled tip so that punches easily through softer metal. So this is natural brass so it's going to punch through pretty easily on that. You're going to see that your wing has a hole already pre-drilled in the blank at the top. We want to add a hole to the bottom here. So not too close because you don't want to punch through the metal, but you know, on the tip, near the tip of the wing, let's go ahead and simply add a hole. Do that to this one as well. And if your pliers You've been, th this comes with a um, replacement tip in the package, but after using them, sometimes you might feel that maybe it's a little rough. You could just use a chain nose, completely just kind of crimp it down two times and it's really smooth. You could use the reliefing block to smooth any rough edge or replace your tip eventually. I've used this one for years and haven't had to replace it. Okay, this just made me think of a really cool idea. I've done this before, but... This might be a cool, another video. Take these two wings like this to make a necklace, for this pendant. And then from here, I can create wire loops or jump rings and then hang like a stone or a focal, or even simply just layer these two, oh gosh, better yet, layer these two on top of each other like this and rivet it. So it's totally stationary like that and then just add like beaded chain or chain and then you have this really cool pendant. Ooh, that might have to, would you like to see that in a video? Let me know, comment, and I'll do another video with that technique. That would be fun. For now, let's make this parent or bracelet. So, <clears throat> lay my guys down like that. And this fun little coin I'm going to sand that up a little bit. Let's lighten that. This has really beautiful detail. Um, great pattern in it, impression. So um, that natural brass is going to stay in the background, and you're going to kind of just polish it and brighten up the raised areas to match the back of, of the wing blank, that light color. And then, again, use your hole punch plier to add a second hole. There's one pre-drilled. I'm going to go directly across from that. I love making connectors out of components that are typically maybe, you know, designed for something else. Like, you typically think this would just be a charm, but simply add a hole. Now you have a connector, something that could be um, used in a different way. That's the fun of jewelry making. You could get creative and... Do whatever you like. There are no rules. Okay, so I'm going to use 5.25, I believe, millimeter jump rings. And, oh, first we need to curve this, don't we? So, filigree shaping pliers, amazing tool. Love this tool. I use it a whole lot for many different purposes. 
So what I'm gonna show now is to curve this blank. So simply hold it in your hand. I'm using the eight millimeter um, barrel side, so it's a little bit larger. The other side is 6.5, I believe. And just curve that and you know just curve it place it on your wrist you're gonna wait until you I'm gonna need a little bit more so I'm gonna go towards the tip here curve it in a little bit more and continue to do so until it fits you or if you're making them to sell or for gifts then you kind of make a variety of sizes you leave some a little bit less curved you know Let's do a variety. They're easy to adjust too for someone. You can just, even when it's put together, you can grab these pliers and adjust it as needed. So, <clears throat> all right. Almost there. Okay, so I'm going to connect these together and then we'll do some bead, some bead links. I lost my other chain nose plier. You know, for bead and button show, I brought, gathered my tools to bring for demos and I think it's just still in a show bin somewhere. Because usually I use two of them to open and close jump rings. I mean, you could absolutely use your fingers and nail like I do a lot, which I have to do now. <laughs> I was like looking for my second plier and I couldn't find it, but. <clears throat> All right. So we have this portion done, which sits nicely on my wrist. So what you could do to finish this off is simply add chain. You could do chain from like one side and then either like a lobster clasp or a hook here and then this could be an extender so you could hook it into different varying lengths. Maybe drop a little bead from that. Use the Vogue chain if you wanted it a little bit lighter. Um, or you could add bead links. We're going to do this bead link technique. <clears throat> so I'm going to use our solid brass wire, which is new. Love it. It does not, um, it does tarnish. So it will naturally patina. And because it is complete solid brass, it's so beautiful. Ooh, look at that. Do these kind of peacock colored beads. This might be a little bit smaller than, oh, here, here we go. I think this size is going to fit my, yeah, that's going to fit the bead cap better. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a scratchy throat today. Okay, so solid brass wire. This is 20 gauge. Um, so is that little section there I had. But just Clip off a few inches, like well, three inches or so. I want two sections of that. And I'm going to use my round nose pliers to start forming it to form a loop. Now I'm going to leave this loop open to attach directly to the wing, the tip of the wing, and then close that up. It's going to create like two coils. All right. And then use my flush cutter to clip back there. Straighten your coils with the chain nose plier. Okay, so this is our square, I think seven millimeter square bead cap. Go ahead and slide that on. 
I like using bead caps on rondelles and different beads just because it, you know, adds a little bit more interest and then it ties in the metal color for the rest of your design. It's really pretty. This little guy here is a smoky quartz, kind of like, like a rondelle in a way, but it's just like a little puffed. It's so cute. I love that bead. I've had those for a long time and I think they're almost gone. And then a vintage corrugated bead. So there's my bead link. Go ahead and finish that off by doing that same loop with two coils. You could, of course, do more if you prefer. With that. My nails have seen better days too, sorry about that. Should have probably taken my polish off so it wasn't all chipped and I have patina and all sorts of things going on. Alright, so there we go. And we'll do one more. <coughs> All right, get it in there. Let me know too, have you played around with the deco etch technique much? I know deco emboss seems to be the more popular from what I've seen out there. I love searching like the hashtag vintage on Instagram and seeing what everyone's making. Um, and there are a lot of people using um, our dyes in the machine, which is so exciting, and the patinas. But yeah, so I'd love to know what's your favorite pattern, um, what you'd love to see. Just comment and let me know. And I'm always thinking of uh, new techniques to share using all of these tools and components. So, all right, same stack. Got our bead cap, our rondelle, smoky quartz, and a corrugated bead. And we're going to finish that off again with our loop and two coils. Click that. It's that easy. Pretty quick project too. I don't know time-wise how we are, but it doesn't take long. 15, 20 minutes maybe. Um, but like I said, I already have the start of look at this. I can make two more. <clears throat> All right, so we have that. Now I'm just gonna simply add my clasp, grab another jump ring. And the fun thing with the loop is this wire loop on the end, that, that could just function as um, the other end of your clasp. So let's see what I did here. Yeah, that was left like that. So I'll show you when I'm closing this up. This is going to function as this loop is simply the other end of the lobster. You just clip it right in. You can wear it that way. You can wear the wings out this way. And I'm probably not going to be able to attach it on camera. <laughs> That's when you think it's going to go smoothly, and that could uh, take a while. But let's see. Give it one try. Oh, I did it. So there you go. Fun project. Um, 
you can curve these too. The wire, if you need to curve um, these bead lengths, just simply bend them with your fingers. The wire is soft, you know, soft enough to do that. So I'll photograph these um, so they're, you can see them a little bit closer up. And um, try them in different colors too. You can do more of a mixed metal look where you do different color wire and different beads. Um, this component can be different. This could be a bead as well or something, maybe a small blank. We have blanks in this size that you could etch or emboss. That would be really cool. But um, have fun, and I hope you start playing along and designing with me in videos. And share, 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 share. I love to see what you make. But um, also hope you're having an awesome day. Um, see you soon. Bye, everyone.